Let me just start this video by saying that no matter what you do, a certain percentage of your emails from your business are going to end up in someone's spam box. What you don't want to happen though is for that number to go above 50%. So today I'm giving you 10 tips to get you out of the spam box and increase your email deliverability. <laughs> founder and CEO of Viral Growth Media, and I partner with small businesses and solopreneurs in the coaching and consulting space and turn their small ventures into competitive companies that earn six and seven figure monthly revenues and actually sustain them. One thing business owners really have to understand is that these top free email service providers like Gmail, Outlook, Yahoo, and obviously Gmail again, are all actively working against spam. They want to offer the best user experience for everyone that uses their platform in that includes putting a lot of safeguards against spam email so you have to make sure that you're not triggering these safeguards in order for your email to get across to your client or your leads inbox where they'll be able to see it here are 10 tips I have for you today to increase your email deliverability number one make sure your list is clean there's something called a sender reputation reputation score. It's a score internet service providers assign to your domain or even your IP address based on how reputable you are as an email sender. Especially if you have a very low score, they see you as a spam account and will not let your emails go through. While a high score means you do not spam and you're sending out actual emails. One way to get a bad sender reputation score is if a lot of your emails bounce. This usually happens if you're buying a list or scraping leads for your cold email marketing campaigns. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. But you want to make sure all those emails are valid. Otherwise, a lot of them will bounce and your domain or IP address might be triggered as spam. So make sure to clean your list before you start your campaign. You can do this using several platforms like Debounce io neverbounce.io hunter.io and a bunch more number two pay attention to your subject line the more emails you send that get open the more email providers are going to think you are a valid email sender and not a spam bot and a large part of why people open emails is because of the subject line honestly i know there are a lot of articles out there about the best email subject lines for 2023 but there's really no one formula that would work for every industry and every market. You want to try out the ones that work the best right now based on research, but you also want to go back to your previous subject lines and see which ones perform the best. So do some A-B testing on subject lines and just always keep track of what your audience is responding to the most. Number three, maximize your preview text. The preview text is those 10 or so words that come up when you're browsing your email as a preview to your email. It's essentially just the first few words of the email. So you don't want to waste that on, hi Ted, hope you're having a good day. You want that first sentence to be something that would grab their attention and make it something that addresses their pain, tells them about the results they're looking for, or lets them envision the dream. If you want to make an impact in that short space, make it about your target audience. Number four, steer clear of spam triggers. At the start of this video, I mentioned how email providers have safeguards against spam and they actually do have a list of words that are considered spam triggers. You may get away with one or two, but if your email is littered with these spam trigger words, good luck getting into anyone's inbox. Things like 100% or free or guaranteed or buy direct clearance and money making are just some of them. There are actually hundreds of spam triggers and I'm going to post an article below which will be a good resource for you to know what to avoid. Number five, spelling and grammar matter. If the body of your email is littered with spelling and grammar errors or you use a bunch of exclamation points after every sentence, you are likely to be triggered as spam, especially if you're cold emailing and this is your first email to them. So make
make sure your content is professional and went through the Grammarly app. Number six, build up your sender reputation. Earlier, I told you about your sender reputation score. You want to build that up before you actually start going with massive campaigns that have you sending hundreds of emails a day. You can do this by sending emails first to your team, your family, you know, friends, and making sure that they reply to your email and have a thread going if possible. Try to make the email sound real. Don't just do a keyboard smash back and forth. There are platforms out there that automates this process for you if you're interested. You want to do this process consistently, not just at the start. You want to start your campaigns gradually instead of sending out 500 cold emails immediately. Build up to that number, like maybe start with 50, then 100, and so on. This will really help your sender reputation score because they'll see your email having active interactions and not just constantly sending out mass emails. If you want to check your sender reputation score, you go on sites like senderscore.org, Trusted Source, or Google Postmaster tool. Number seven, don't mix your cold email marketing campaign list with your opt-in list in the same address or even the same domain. Everyone who is in your opt-in list has a higher likelihood of opening your emails because they already know you and they actually signed up to hear more from you, whether that's for a lead magnet or newsletter or something else. Meanwhile, your cold email list has never heard from you and you're reaching out to them blind. So it would be more difficult to get them to open your emails. You don't want one list to affect the other stats and possibly damage its reputation. If you can, use completely different domains for your cold email list that is still recognizable as your company, but just a little different. Make sure that the domain will also redirect to your actual website so they know it's legit. Number eight, run a re-engagement campaign. This is especially for your current opt-in list. There is probably a number of people who signed up for your email list but aren't engaging with your emails and it is affecting your deliverability. So you want to run a re-engagement campaign or a win back campaign, like maybe offering them a coupon, a special item on sale or a freebie. But if after all that, they still don't respond, tell them that you're going to unsubscribe them unless they decide to opt in again. It is not a loss. You are merely improving your stats so you can reach and help more people. Number nine, use double opt-ins for your email list. We've been talking about cold email marketing a lot. Don't let your email list with verified customers suffer. Adding a double opt-in eliminates people from subscribing to your email list by mistake, or maybe they've put in the wrong email. The double opt-in is like a second guarantee that whoever's signing up is actually interested going through your content to opt in again. You want to encourage them to whitelist your email addresses so you always go straight to their inbox and improving your deliverability. Number 10, take note of the CAN Spam Act. There is actually a CAN Spam Act in the United States, which is a compliance guide for businesses, especially those for commercial advertisement and promotion. So complying to these guides will help you from being tagged as spam. These include things like making sure your unsubscribe button is obvious, including a physical address and not putting misleading or false information. You can also check the FTC website and I'll also include a link below. Let us know if you have any questions in the comments section, or if you think we left something out, let us know below. Give this video a like so we can reach more people and I'll see you guys in the next video.